Welcome back to the Old Soul Millennial channel. In today's video, I would like to show you how to find a short circuit with a power probe. Now, before I show you how to utilize the power probe and to track down a short circuit, we need to go over the basics of a common 12 volt circuit that you would find on a normal car or truck. So starting out, we have our battery. Our battery, when properly charged, should supply at least 12 volts of power to our circuit. From there, we have a fuse. The fuse is really important because it protects components downstream on the circuit. If we have a short circuit somewhere downstream, this fuse, in theory, should blow, thus protecting our wiring and our other components down line, such as relays, light fixtures, switches, you know, whatever we need to power down the line. So after the fuse, it's pretty common that you may have a relay. A relay is similar to a switch. A relay basically is a switch, but as opposed to a toggle switch, which can only handle, you know, so much current, so many amps, a relay allows you to switch over large current loads safely. So on a relay, you normally have at least four terminals. So 30 is the incoming line from the battery, 85 is the ground, 86 is your 12 volt trigger, so that might be an ignition line coming in, 12 volt coming in, and then 87 is your 12 volt, 12 volt output. So that 87 will go down to something such as a light fixture, your headlights, windshield washer, pump, or whatever. You get the idea. So, when we have a short circuit, there is an issue between the positive terminal on the battery and the fixture itself. For some reason, this line has grounded. So this, this is basically a short, right? So this line, the wire has rubbed and it is now touching a metallic object which is also grounded on the vehicle. So, you know, the power isn't able to make it to the fixture we need to power because, of course, electricity likes to take the path of least resistance. And in this case, the short is the path of least resistance and thus it won't power our light fixture. Say we were to have a short in this circuit, where is the first place I would start? So the first place I would start is on the fuse itself. So I would plug in my power probe, I would light it up. And on the top of common blade fuses, there are metal protrusions that stick up, you know, on top of the fuse. And what you can do, take the tip of the power probe and probe the battery side, see if you get 12 volts of power, which would be right here, and then I would probe the output side of the fuse. Now, if you have some type of short circuit, what you're gonna find is that when you go to the output side of the fuse, you're gonna hear a grounding signal. You know, there's gonna be a green arrow, zero uh, volts coming through, and you're gonna hear that uh, indicating that we have some type of short. Now, how do you find out where that short is between the fuse and the component? Well, that's the real question, and I wish I could tell you, but you're just gonna have to do your own detective work. And on these modern, modern cars, it can be really tricky because you know, you're, you're trying to fish through 25, 30 wires in a really tight wire loom. You know, you're looking for the white wire with a little bit of magenta, a little bit of pink. It, it gets really tricky. So what you're gonna have to do, you're just gonna have to find some points where you can go down line and start probing from there. Now I'm going to simulate a short circuit. So basically we have our supply coming off the battery, fuse, five amp fuse. This is the wire that we're gonna short out, this red wire here, but that's connected to the positive side of this light fixture. And then this light fixture is grounded on this piece of metal, which simulates, you know, a truck frame or something like that. And this is also grounded back to the battery. So we have a complete loop. Now, a short circuit happens again because one of our supply wires somewhere on that supply side that wire is now touching a metallic grounded object such as a frame why does this happen well perhaps the wire loom has failed perhaps the auto manufacturer didn't take something into consideration but commonly what happens you know this wire will be rubbing due to the car's vibration on a metallic object and then eventually it's going to start sparking and hopefully it will blow the fuse and that is exactly what I wanted to happen. Because that fuse blew, it protected all the wire and our downstream components, so hopefully nothing's damaged. But now, we have a short circuit right here, and now we need to track this down. All right, so our off-road light is no longer functioning. Let's go in our owner's manual and look up what fuse corresponds to that off-road light. So it happens to be this one. Let's take a look at the fuse. And you can see 
This fuse is clearly blown, but we can confirm that with our power probe. So let's break out the power probe. So we can take the tip of our power probe and probe into the fuse. First, we're gonna start on the blade that corresponds to the battery supply side of the fuse. 12.7 volts, steady, strong, high pitch sound, indicating that we have no issue between the fuse going back to the battery. How about downstream? How about the component side of the fuse? Oh, interesting. We're getting that lower pitch sound, green arrow, zero volts. So we have a direct short on the component side of this fuse. So let's investigate. Let's see if we can track down this short. So I've gone online and I found a wiring diagram for my vehicle and I've identified that this yellow wire at this junction corresponds to the supply line for my off-road light. Now because this is a junction right here, I'm going to pretend this is a connector, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uncouple this connection and then I'm going to probe either side of this junction. So if I go back to the fuse, I'm not getting anything, which is good. That means I don't have an issue between this connection and my fuse. So from here I can infer that my short is somewhere downstream. So let's confirm by probing the other side of our connection. And yep, our short lies between this point and our component. So you know we're tracking it down slowly but surely. Let's see what we can find downstream. All right, so we know from this point downstream, down to our light fixture, there's some type of direct short. So this is where you're just gonna have to do some detective work. You know, you're looking for sharp edges, look for wire that doesn't have wire loom, damage to wire loom, perhaps an area where a wire may have gotten pinched or damaged. So I'm looking around, you know, I see this sharp edge underneath the dashboard and, wait a minute, what do you know? Let me zoom you in here, get you in focus. Look at the damage to the wire right there. I noticed a little bit of black charring indicating that this probably arced at one point, you know, our direct short. So I'd say this is definitely our issue. So what I would do from here is replace the damaged section of wire, protect it with wire loom, and try and prevent this from happening in the future. So let's replace this section of wire, protect it, and then let's probe the wire right here before we install a new fuse and connect the circuit to ensure that we no longer have a direct short. All right, so I've replaced that shorted section of wire with a new piece of wire. I've also added a piece of split wire loom where that wire goes over the sharp edge to help protect that wire. Something else I may do, if I can find a place to zip tie this wire, I will in fact zip tie it to prevent this from vibrating and moving around. You know, we wanna try and prevent this from happening in the future. So again, from this point downstream, I'm just gonna probe real quick with my power probe to ensure that we're no longer getting a direct short getting zero, 00 on the screen, indicating that we have continuity from this point forward. I wasn't getting a ground sound. So I believe we have corrected our issue. So I'm gonna reconnect this connector. Let's install a new fuse and see if the off-road light comes on. And we are back in business.